shoes are so creaky. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. In today's video, I thought I would talk a little bit about where I find my inspiration. And as you can see behind me, I'm in front of my little mini library. I just have two bookshelves. They are the Billy bookcases from Ikea. They're just the, the shorter ones. It's three levels. This bottom shelf is actually where all of my children's books are. And I'm going to be showing you guys a few of them because... So honestly, where I find most of my inspiration, <laughs> hey Dante, is from reading other books. So usually I'll go to the children's side of a bookstore and I'll just see what's new and kind of see what kind of books are on the market right now. And a lot of the illustrations, there are so many fantastic illustrators. It is crazy how much I feel like the illustration game has changed just over the past, I wanna say, decade. Um, a lot of the inspiration that I get for my illustrations, mainly because I really love watercolor and ink, and I say it all the time because it has to be one of my favorite mediums to sketch with. Just drawing in general, I've gotta have a pen with me and some watercolor and colored pencils just to give it some more texture. But watercolor and ink are my favorite and I blame Winnie the Pooh and Alice in Wonderland. Wherever I'm at, if I find a book that inspires me, the illustrations are cool, I'll buy it. But I usually try to go to the library as well to get some inspiration because obviously I'm out of room on my bookshelves. But when I'm in Ollie's, the book section is very, very cheap. Um, and this is one of the books that I got from there. It's actually just an Alice in Wonderland coloring book, but it has all of like the classic illustrations. Just look how beautiful that is, just ink. Just look. Cross-hatching played such a huge role in all of these older illustrations. <laughs> Illustrators that inspired me were from books that I read, obviously, as a child when I was younger. And we don't have, we didn't have all of these really cool digital illustrations and all of these cool techniques that there are nowadays in all of these books that we're seeing. It was very traditional, and there's something really nostalgic about that. And I think that's why that inspires me and that stays with me because it reminds me so much of my childhood and it makes me feel good like to try to recreate that feeling that i got when i would see and read books like this and you come across the illustrations and it just really brings the story to life and i truly think that's just why it resonates with me so much classics absolute classics i remember being i don't think maybe in second or third grade, and you know how your teachers used to read to you in class, like they pick a book and read aloud, and the twits, are you kidding me? We, I never read Matilda in school, but I was at a bookstore in Scranton um, a few months ago, and I saw that it was on sale, it was in like the gently used books pile, and it's Matilda, I had to get it. Let's take a look at these illustrations. It's just kind of like that very simplistic, and classic watercolor and ink, like what you can do with just those two mediums. And sometimes I feel like for me, the less is more, that less is more in a sense. That's not to say that I don't enjoy all of these beautiful illustrations. I have so much freaking detail that I could spend literally 10 minutes looking at the same page and picking little objects from within that one illustration. It's just amazing how talented people are. And then this one's the twits. Like, these illustrations. Writing was always something that I loved to do. And then as I got, got older, you know, my brother, I mentioned this in another video that my brother used to draw a lot and I of course wanted to be like my older brother. So I always tried to do what he drew and over time, I just started to love it for me. Like, love drawing for myself. It wasn't a competition. It wasn't me just trying to be like him. It was finding myself through art, in a sense. And 
it's such a crazy thing because I cannot picture my life with Oh, or I, don't, I don't know who I would be, I don't know what I would do if I wasn't a creative. I feel like that's such a huge part of who I am today. What kind of bird is that? Yeah, so that's kind of where the storytelling and illustrations kind of combined for me. And then that's when I tried, I have so I have like a folder full of so many different ideas for different children's books that just come to me. Like just the other day I saw a squirrel it was literally playing and swinging from like a, a very thin branch of leaves. For 10 minutes, I watched it out the window, just jumping and swinging. And I was like, what is going through this little squirrel's mind? You were just literally playing by yourself. And it's things like that. You really are inspired by the world around you because I came up with this whole little story about his little life and what it could be like. And I love that. I love that you can take something, a moment, or even like an inanimate object, and you can just create this whole background story for it and give it, give it life, pretty much. And I just think that's so freaking cool. Yeah, so that's that's definitely where my love for me stemmed from from storytelling, and now I want to create the images that go with it. So writing and illustrating together, that's just I truly feel like that's my calling, that's what I want to do. Did I just reopen my cup? Potato peeler got me yesterday. Hello. Celebration of Beatrix Potter, art and letters by more than 30 of today's favorite children's book illustrators. What's amazing about this is all of their different styles. But yeah, if you don't know who Beatrix Potter is, Peter Rabbit, <laughs> she is the author of many, many, many beloved children's books. Um, one of the main ones, the one specifically I was introduced to was The Tale of Peter Rabbit. I just love, I love the colors in this. So it starts off by actually showing you like, the original illustrations and the story. And then as you go along, like on page 16, it's it's illustrators kind of like writing to Beatrix Potter, like telling them how she influenced them and you know how they felt inspired by her. And this this illustrator specifically is Peter H. Reynolds. Let me just take a look. Look at that beautiful, beautiful illustration. Look at the colors, look at all that he did with just a simple color palette. And this book specifically really gives me motivation to try different styles. And this one, look, oil pastel, do you see all that texture? And this illustrator is Laura. Brendan Wenzel. This one's really freaking cool. This one's Chris Halton. I apologize if I butchered that. But look at this color, look at the style. Yeah, I will put the name right there. You guys let me know how to pronounce it. This one is from the story, The Tale of Miss Tiggy Winkle. I haven't read that one personally, but just look how cool. I think it's so amazing how different they all are but they're all beautiful in their own way. Like they're they're all so freaking cool. It's just, it's really wild to me. Another place that I go to, obviously you have like Google, Pinterest, love Pinterest so much. Um, I've come up, I found some really amazing illustrators that I now follow that I never would have known about if it wasn't for Pinterest. Social media obviously is such a big way to share your art and to meet other artists. And that's one that I do use, but my main one is books. I think that's just the best way. It's, it's the best way that I've found inspiration. And I have, I have so many different children's books down, down here. There's a stack. I even have comic books, because I remember I would go to the comic book store with my cousin when we were younger. We'd like scrounge up whatever money we had and just go buy a few comic books, it was really fun. Had to buy it because La Princesa and the Pea. The Princess and the Pea. 
told in Spanish? What? This little Latina would have loved to have more books like this when I was younger. Had to buy it, of course. It's illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. I believe it's like a, there's two last names. I'll, I'll definitely put the name and the author and illustrator up above here if you guys wanna check this book out. I 100% recommend it. It's not all in Spanish either. Do not fret if you do not read Spanish, if you do not speak Spanish 100%. I don't. I am Puerto Rican and Spaniard. Do I speak the full language? No. Can I get by with my grandmother and family when they speak slowly? Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm left out. Um, I really wish my mother would have like forced me as a child to learn a language. She said that she tried and we just weren't with and I was like, you should have just not spoken to us in English and we would have had to <laughs> would have had to learn to get by to ask for food and anything. And I know the basics. It's just having longer conversations. It's hard for me to put the phrases together. And I am practicing now again as an adult. But I have this very annoying um, quality, which is trying to learn several languages at once. So that all gets kind of confusing. I just like, I'm learning American Sign Language, Japanese, and Spanish. And then when I watch my Korean dramas, I also throw in some Korean in there too, because I just have to make things difficult, <laughs> apparently. But it, it only one or two words in each sentence is Spanish, but this is also based in Peru this book so like the styles and the textiles and everything all Peruvian so like the first sentence on the first page take a look at this illustration first off look how freaking cool that is and the first sentence is there once was a prince who wanted a wife but not any niña would do in his life the amazing thing is it has a glossary on the first page so if you're trying to teach your kids Spanish or if you're trying to learn Spanish yourself, I honestly feel like children's books, like as like beginners, best way to learn. Best way to learn, it's oversimplified. So it really sticks with you because it's so easy. And it says right here, you just go on the little glossary, you know, alphabetized, you find Nina, which is girl. And in like the little brackets, it shows you how to pronounce it, the pronunciation. Amazing, representation matters so much. And that is something that I definitely want to include in the future stories that I create as well. Cause a younger me would have definitely, this would have been a game changer. It is, Mama sneaked away to the Royal Jardin and found a small pea that was fit for a queen. And Mama is mother and Jardin is garden. And it shows you too, the illustrations really help context always helps oh my god i just got a flashback context clues in class <laughs> as like a kid but it really does because you see that she's in a garden so it's it's just so easy to pick up look at her so yeah, this is one of my most treasured children's books that i have in my collection E.H. Shepard, I've mentioned him several times because these illustrations, along with Lewis Carroll, I hold very dear to my heart. This book is called The Art of Winnie the Pooh. Just look at like the, the pencil lines. I don't have in my library the like original Winnie the Pooh books. There's three of them, they're like chapter books. They're on my list to get. I'm gonna put them on my birthday wish list and, or Christmas wish list, whichever. Look, right here is an early sketch of an anxious looking Winnie the Pooh struggling into his duffel coat. How freaking cute is that? Tigger Still is my favorite. Books like this, you're gonna find so much inspiration. All in all, pick up a children's book, go to the children's section in a bookstore in the library, check out some books, bring them home, try to recreate some of the drawings. That's really what's gonna get you and the juices flowing.
there's so many possibilities that come with illustrating. That's what makes it just truly amazing. Like your imagination can run wild. You can create anything, anything that you want, anything that you can think of. So that is the best advice that I can give. That's, this is what inspires me. This is what helps me. And I really hope that it helps you along your journey as well, whether you're a beginner drawer or someone who just loves books or just wants to start getting into art, you know? I just really hope that these books that I've shown and these little tips can help you find your passion along the way, like it did for me. So, if you have any tips, if you have any recommendations on what inspires you, please leave it down in the comments. And let's help each other out. Let's build a community here where we can talk to each other about art. And let's just share. Let's just share advice. I absolutely love that. So please feel free to do that um, down in the comments or tag me in different posts and things like that. I'd love to see what you guys are creating. I'd love to see the books that you recommend. Um, yeah. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can make more videos like this. I hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.